Hello everyone, we are going to start our class. In the last three classes, we were discussing about a particle in infinite one-dimensional box. Now we have one more class related to the particle in infinite box. Before that, we have to learn some formalism. Uh, that is uh, uh, to go for uh, before going to the next classes related to infinite 1D box uh, we have to learn what is Hilbert space uh, what is Dirac notations uh, bracket notations uh, and uh, how to write uh, the linear combination of different states uh, and uh, how to find expectation values if we write the uh, wave function as the linear combination of different states uh, and uh, Hermitian operators and its properties. So uh, first uh, in this class uh, we will discuss the Hilbert space uh, and uh, in the next class uh, we will discuss the Dirac notations uh, means bracket notations uh, and in and its properties. Uh, then we will discuss uh, the Hermitian operator. After that uh, we will go for the uh, particle in infinite potential box uh, part 4 okay then after explain the part of four uh, we will discuss the potential step and uh, other 1d problems okay so in this class uh, we are going to discuss uh, what is hilbert space maybe uh, already you people have uh, you people maybe heard about the hilbert space but what i know is that uh, most of people those who are doing MSc from India don't know what is the what is exactly Hilbert space is they just read it in the from the textbook and during the examination they copy paste but most of the people don't know what is the, what is Hilbert space mean so in this class uh, I my aim is to uh, teach you to make your concept clear to teach you the Hilbert space in a very simple language means in an understanding way so if you don't know what is Hilbert space please watch this lecture completely so I can guarantee you that your concept about the Hilbert space will be very solid okay so consider a two-dimensional plane uh, imagine your notebook the pay, uh, your notebook and uh, in your notebook means any two dimension plane we can draw a vector so here i am drawing this is x axis this is y axis let me draw a vector vector r let this point is have x coordinate x y coordinate y now we know that in the vector notation this vector r can be written as r equal to x i cap plus y j cap let this x coordinate equal to 3 and y coordinate is equal to 2 then this vector r you can write as 3 i cap plus y j cap so this is a two dimensional vector and you can see that this vector is a this vector lies in the two dimensional space in this plane you can make a number of vectors you can make a vector like this another vector you can make a vector like this you can make a vector like this means you can draw vector in the any direction in the any direction so you can create here an infinite number of two dimensional vectors in this two dimensional uh, in this two dimensional space and every vector have an x coordinate and y coordinate so here uh, here uh, this vector lies in a vector space its dimension is 2 remember that and we represent that dimension with x coordinate and y coordinate now imagine a vector in the 3D, a vector in three dimension. Let me draw x, y, z coordinate. 
x, y, z. So I am drawing a vector. Vector r and its x coordinate is x, y coordinate is y, z coordinate is z. Now we can write this vector as x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap. Now if the value of x is equal to 1, y equal to 3 and z equal to 2, then this vector r we can write as 1 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 2 k cap. So this is one of the vector in three dimension. You can make such an infinite number of vectors in this 3D space. Okay. So look here you we have we discussed the two vector space. One is a two dimensional vector space, another is a three dimensional vector space. In both in in this both vector space, the dimension is finite. In the first case it was two, in the second case it is three. The dimension of the space is three. So in a three-dimensional vector space, when you draw a vector, that vector have three coordinate. In a two-dimensional vector space, when you are, when you draw a vector, that vector have a two dimension. Similarly, if you consider an vector space which have infinite dimension, not one or two or any other finite number, instead the space have infinite dimension infinite dimension such vector space is called such vector space is called uh, hilbert space so when a vector space a vector space a vector space a vector space with infinite dimension a vector space with infinite dimension is called is called hilbert space hilbert space now we will discuss some properties related to the hilbert space you can easily understand by comparing it with the this 2d and 3d vector space this 2d vector and 3d vector space that is uh, where the dimension is finite such vector space is usually called euclidean space e u c l l i d i n euclidean vector space vector space now consider this a three dimensional vector space in three dimensional vector space or we can say that a three dimensional euclidean space there are three base vectors i cap j cap and k cap three base vectors in this two dimensional vectors vector space there is a two base vectors here we have considered the x y space so there is a i cap j cap two base vectors i cap and j cap and you can see that these vectors are orthogonal to each other these base vectors are base vectors base vectors are orthogonal to orthogonal to each other orthogonal to each other means uh, their dot product will be equal to zero so i cap dot j cap equal to zero and j cap dot k cap equal to zero and k cap dot i cap equal to zero so if their dot product dot product in mathematics we call dot product or in the quantum mechanics usually we call it inner product this dot product also called inner product inner product so whenever the inner product of two vectors is equal to zero we can say that these two vectors are orthogonal to each other means they are they lie 90 degree to each other what it actually mean they lie 90 degree it means that this vector have no component in the j direction 
and j have no component in the i direction for i will show you this point here so look consider an x y space look this is vector r this vector have x and y component it's x when you project it to the x axis you will get its x component and when you project this into y axis you will get its y component but a vector in the x axis look this is a vector in the x axis can you project this vector in into the y axis no because this vector in the x axis have only x component its y component will be zero similarly a vector in the y axis has no component in the x axis because any point in the y axis let it this point let it be 2 its x will be 0 it will be 0 to its x component equal to 0 so a vector in the y axis has no component in the x axis and a vector in the x axis has no component in the y axis so we know that here i cap is a vector in the uh, x axis and j cap is vector in the y axis so i cap have no component in the j and j cap have no component in the i similarly j have no component in the k and k have no component in the i j and k have no component in the i and i have no component in k this is mean this is what is the concept of orthogonality when you say that two vectors are orthogonal or two functions are orthogonal it means that one vector have no component in the direction of other vector okay that's what I mean by orthogonality so when have it have no component their scalar product or dot product sometimes we call it is inner product also their inner product will be zero and another in the euclidean space another thing you know that the base vectors have uh, has length one the base vectors have i cap is the unit vector in the direction of x axis with magnitude one so the base vectors have length one length one means we call this length as norm also length means no the length of a base vectors is always unity so if we can say that its norm is one or unity so when you take its dot product or scalar product or inner product with itself you will get one okay because the magnitude of this vector is equal to one so when you take a dot product of a vector with itself and if the result is one it means that the length of that vector is one or the norm of that vector is one the norm of that vector is 1 means we can say that this vector is normalized this vector is normalized okay so if the length of a vector is 1 means it is a normalized vector so you got now two points one is the base vectors are orthogonal to each other since they are orthogonal to each other they are scalar product or inner product will be equal inner product to each other will be equal to zero and the base vectors are unit length or their norm is equal to one or in another way you can say that base vectors are normalized vectors so their dot product with itself will be equal to one the same thing is true for every base vectors in the hilbert space so not this point every base vectors every base base vectors in the hilbert space is orthogonal to each other orthogonal to orthogonal to each other and normalized vectors and they are and they are normalized normalized 
vectors. So I told you that for a two-dimensional vectors, the dimension of space is 2. You can represent it with two coordinates, x and y. For a three-dimensional Euclidean space, the dimension of space is 3. You can represent any vector with three coordinates, x, y, z. And the Hilbert space have infinite number of dimension. The dimension of Hilbert space is infinity. So, how many base vectors will be in a Hilbert space? The number of base vectors in a two-dimensional space is 2. If it is an xy space, you have i cap, j cap. If it is an xy, z space, 3d space, you have three base vectors, i cap, j cap, k cap. Similarly, in a Hilbert space, the dimension is infinity, so here you have infinite number of base vectors. Infinite number of infinite number of base vectors. Base vectors. Why we uh, consider a Hilbert space? It is because uh, when we consider a Hilbert space and its properties. Uh, it is easily we can easily understand the concept of the quantum mechanical system and we can solve many problems easily and quickly okay so uh, i will give an example of infinite uh, and hilbert space so here you know that hilbert space hilbert space of the base the base vectors of a hilbert space of a particle in infinite potential box will be different from the base vectors of a hilbert space of a harmonic oscillator that will be different from the base vectors of hilbert space of a hydrogen atom that will be different from the um, base vector base vectors of a hilbert space of any other quantum mechanical system so every quantum mechanical system have its own Hilbert space. Not this point. Every quantum mechanical system have a very quantum system. Every quantum system have its own Hilbert space. Hilbert Hilbert space. For example particle in a infinite infinite 1d box and we know that for a particle in a infinite 1d box the psi 1 will be equal to under root 2 by l sine pi x upon l and psi 2 equals to under root 2 by l sine 2 pi x upon l etc in normal we can write psi n equal to under root 2 by l sin n pi x upon l and we know that this value n can be for particle in an infinite box n can be uh, not can be 0 it can be 1 2 3 up to infinity this value can be up to oh, n 2 3 up to infinity now look in the three dimensional Euclidean space we have i cap j cap k cap these are three base vectors in the 3d euclidean space in the hilbert space of infinite potential box the psi 1 this is the one of its base vector psi 2 is another base vector psi 3 is another base vector psi, three is base vector. psi 4 is another base vector and up to infinity you can go like this up to infinity so just like in the three-dimensional Euclidean space there is three base vectors because it is a three-dimensional space in the Hilbert space we have infinite number of bases in three-dimensional space we have three bases that is i cap j cap k cap in a Hilbert space we have infinite number of bases which is psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 up etc so for a particle in a 1, 1d box the psi 1 will be this this will be psi 1 and psi 2 will be this and you can go for like this 
and just like uh, i cap is orthogonal to j cap and j cap is orthogonal to k cap and k cap is orthogonal to i cap the psi1 psi2 psi3 these vectors these infinite number of base vectors are orthogonal to each other let us check base vectors are orthogonal to each other so if it is orthogonal to each other their dot product must be equal to zero or we can say that their inner product must be equal to zero so inner product inner product it can be written in a different name it can also called scalar product scalar product or dot product dot product so in quantum mechanics we write the inner product in the bracket notation imagine if you want to write the inner product of psi1 with the psi2 or dot product of psi1 with the psi2 it can be written as a bracket psi1 psi2 in the next class we will learn this direct notations in the bracket notations and its properties etc okay so this is equal to uh, psi 1 star we will learn this price actually represent the complex conjugate of its ket function so psi 1 bra psi 1 means psi 1 star ket psi 2 dx so this is the bracket notation this is in its integration form now for a particle in a 1d box psi 1 psi 2 bracket of psi 1 psi 2 will be the limit of this integral will be the limit of the system so it will be equal to 0 to l for 0 to l box it will be 0 to l psi 1 star will be equal to psi 1 because we know that a psi is in real function so its complex conjugate will be same so psi 1 will be under root 2 by l sin pi x upon l psi 2 is equal to under root 2 by l sin 2 pi x upon l into dx so this is equal to under root 2 by l into under root 2 by l is equal to 2 by l into integral 0 to l this is look sin a into sin b sin a into sin b equal to cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b upon 2 so this we can write a cos of cos a minus b so we have a is pi x upon l b is 2 pi x upon l cos a minus b minus cos a plus b so cos pi x upon l plus uh, 2 pi x upon l upon 2 into dx these two and these two get cancelled so we will get 1 by l integral 0 to l uh, cos a minus b uh, cos minus theta and minus of cos theta both are same we know that a cos minus 180 cos pi and cos minus pi both are equal to minus 1 because cos is a symmetric function so cos minus theta will be equal to cos theta so this is a pi x by l minus 2 pi x by l you can write a cos 2 minus 1 will be equal to pi x by l cos pi x by l into dx again integral 0 to l cos pi x upon l plus 2 pi x upon l that become 3 pi x upon l into dx so this is equal to 1 by l integral integral of cos theta equal to sin theta so this will be equal to sin pi x upon l divided by pi by l limit 0 to l minus sin 3 pi x upon l upon 3 pi by l limit 0 to l so if you give the limit you will get 1 by l so here if you give upper limit x equal to l, l and l get cancel you will get a sin pi lower limit is sin 0 upon pi by l minus sin 3 pi 
minus sine 0 upon 3 pi by L. So here we know that a sine pi equal to 0, sine 0 also 0. Sine 3 pi equal to 0, sine 0 also. So the entire term is equal to 0. So this is equal to 0. So the inner product or dot product of two base vectors in the Hilbert space is always orthogonal to each other. So their inner product will be equal to 0. And similarly, every base vectors are every base vectors are normalized normalized just like i is a normalized vector j is a normalized vector k is a normalized vector psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 these are the basis of hilbert space so they also must be a normalized vectors normal you can say that normalized functions so we know let us check so normalized vector means we know that i cap dot i cap is equal to 1 and j cap dot j cap equal to 1 k cap dot k cap equal to 1 similarly psi 1 the bracket of psi 1 the inner product or dot product of psi 1 must be psi 1 with itself must be equal to 1 and that's also psi 2 must be it's a, itself must be equal to 1 so let us check for psi 1 uh, in bracket of psi 1 or the dot product in the product of psi 1 will be equal to integral 0 to l uh, mode psi 1 square dx so this will be equal to integral 0 to l under root 2 by l sin pi x upon l whole square so this will be equal to 2 by l integral 0 to l sine square pi x upon l dx so this is equal to 2 by l the value of this integral is l by 2 so here 22 get cancelled l and l get cancelled so you will get 1 so psi 1 is normalized similarly you, you can check psi 2 is also normalized psi 3 is also normalized so every basis in the Hilbert space is normalized and they are also orthogonal to each other. And combine the nor orthogonal plus orthogonal orthogonal plus normalized. We call it combined orthonormal. Okay. Orthonormal. So a vector is or a function is orthonormal means uh, they are the vectors are or the functions are orthogonal to each other and every functions are normalized. So every member in the Hilbert space is orthonormal. Remember this point. Every basis, every basis or base vectors you can say that base vectors or base function simply you can say basis also every basis in hilbert space in hilbert space are orthonormal okay now uh, in a 3d uh, in 2d uh, we can write some vectors i like uh, we have already written r equal to 3i cap plus 2j cap. In 3D, we have written another vector r, r is equal to i cap plus 3j cap plus 2k cap. Okay. So by using these vectors, these base vectors, you can write infinite number of other vectors. By using the, the by using the uh, base vectors, you can write an infinite number of other vectors. So similarly, so this is known as linear combination. So here we have linearly combined i cap and j cap. So we got here a vector r. Here we have linearly combined i cap, j cap and k cap means we have linearly combined the base vectors and we got another vector r. Similarly, in the Hilbert space, we can, we can write a function in the Hilbert space as the linear combination of its basis its base vectors just like any vector in the three dimension can be written 
written as the linear combination of i cap j cap k cap or x cap y cap z cap we can write any function in the hilbert space as the linear combination of psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 etc so for an example i can write psi of x equal to uh, any number uh, 3 psi 1 plus 2 psi 2 plus psi 3 i can write in this way or i can write any another function phi of x is equal to 1 upon under root to psi 1 plus 1 upon under root to psi 2 so just like uh, we can write uh, by making the linear combination of i cap j cap k cap if you can write any vector similarly we can write any function in the hilbert space as the linear combination of its basic vectors or its basis or its base vectors or its base functions okay so now these functions we know that here we already said that this psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 are normalized and also orthogonal to each other this can also we can normalize we can normalize this psi we can normalize this phi of x means any function in the hilbert space can be normalized how if let i am writing a general formula let us psi of x equal to c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2 plus c3 psi3 if the value of mod c1 square plus mod c2 square plus mod c3 square equal to 1 then it means that psi of x is normalized normalized so if it is not normalized already you can normalize it by using this equation okay we will solve some problem then we discuss the uh, this part for particle in an infinite potential box okay and we will learn how to find the probability of finding particle in a particular state when we return it in, in a, as a function uh, in the linear combination of different bases and also expectation value of energy angular momentum linear momentum etc that we will discuss in the part 4 of a particle in an infinite potential box okay so let's here look here for the phi of x 1 upon under root 2 c1 equal to 1 upon under root 2 c2 is 1 upon under root 2 so mod c1 square plus mod c2 square equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 equal to 1 so here this psi this phi of x is a normalized function here look at this check this one here uh, mod c1 c1 equal to 3 so mod c1 is square will be equal to uh, 9 9 c2 is a 2 its square will be 4 c3 is 1 its square equal to 1 so this is equal to 15 not equal to 1 so this is not a normalized function it is not necessary to normalize but look here here psi 1 psi 2 the base vectors are always normalized and also always orthogonal but when you write any other function as the linear combination of base vectors you can normalize that function by using this equation okay so i am going to conclude this lecture uh, here we have discussed what is hilbert space so just like in the 2d space we have two base vectors in the 3d euclidean space we have three base vectors in the hilbert space we have infinite number of base vectors or base functions and every quantum mechanical system have its own hilbert space and every base just like in the 3d space the base vectors i cap j cap k cap are orthogonal to each other in the hilbert space psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 are orthogonal to each other and just like the i cap is a normalized vector j cap is a normalized vector k cap is a normalized vector in the hilbert space psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 these are the these base functions are normalized functions
okay and we can write any function in the hilbert space as the linear combination of these base functions just like we can write uh, any vector in the Euclidean space as the linear combination of i cap j cap k cap okay so the hilbert space part is over now uh, there are application related to this formalism in the particle in a infinite one d box means when we write a function as the linear combination of different state then how to normalize that function and how to find the expectation value how to find the probability of finding particle in a particular state etc these things we will discuss in the part 4 of a particle in a 1d box okay so if you understood what is the hilbert space after watching this lecture please like the video and also subscribe this channel and please share it with your friends if they are, if they are doing uh, postgraduate or graduate in the physics and uh, we have started a whatsapp channel so if you join if you follow our whatsapp channel you will get uh, every information related to the physics related to exam in india and also physics related job opportunities the notification for a physics related job opportunities its link is given in the description so go to the description and click on the link and join and follow our whatsapp channel and also uh, our the tele we have we have a telegram channel for uh, msc physics uh, it's have now uh, around 2500 members so you can also join there we share their different materials handwritten notes and video lectures etc so please join that uh, channel and we are providing online course for CSCR net gate and set examination so if you are interested please visit our site okay this class is over